Today we're going to bust the top five most common myths about insulin pumps and type two diabetes. I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. And I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. And we are taking control of your diabetes. If you're watching this video, then you're very likely a super cool, savvy healthcare provider, just like Steve and I. And you probably know that insulin pumps are frequently recommended for and used by people with type one diabetes, like Steve and I, and with great results. But HCPs are not seriously considering pumps for patients with type two diabetes. Why is that? We know that many people in the US living with type two diabetes are not reaching glycemic targets. And this is especially true for those that require insulin. The standard therapy for those patients has traditionally been multiple daily injections, but adherence and persistence with multiple daily injections has been extremely poor, with only 20% sticking to this regimen after one year. So with such poor MDI results, why aren't more healthcare providers at least trying pumps with their insulin requiring type two patients? Well, there's several myths out there about why people living with type two diabetes aren't good candidates for pumps. So what are we here today to do, Steve? We're here to bust those myths. <laughs> That's right, Steve. We're gonna bust the top five most common myths about insulin pumps and type two diabetes. But you might be wondering, how do we know that these are myths? Well, besides simply being extremely smart and handsome doctors who have many pump using type two patients, there was also a recent multi-center clinical trial called Secure T2D that followed 305 adult insulin requiring type two patients put on the Omnipod 5 system, which is a hybrid closed loop system with automated insulin delivery communicating with a continuous glucose monitor. And the results of this trial address all five of the most common myths. Okay, let's get into it, Steve. Myth number one. Patients with type two diabetes can't count carbs. First of all, counting carbs is difficult. I can certainly attest to that as someone who's been living with type one diabetes for a long time. And I know Jeremy can as well. Jeremy, what are you doing? What's that? I said, what are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm counting my carbs. With an abacus? Yeah, man, you got some better way to do it? Second, we know that patients with type two diabetes can do well with fairly consistent pre-meal insulin doses inputted by the user. Third, when the Omnipod 5 is used in conjunction with a CGM, known as a hybrid closed loop system, the pump will automatically give insulin after the meal if the CGM values start to rise and reduce and even stop insulin delivery altogether if the algorithm predicts a low blood sugar level. So the need to accurately count carbs simply isn't as important with this kind of system. Additionally, alerts and alarms when set by the user and their healthcare professional will alert the patient of a potential need for a correction dose, which is really easy to do with the Omnipod 5. Furthermore, the Secure T2D study shows about 84% of participants did not carb count at recruitment, and that 37% continued alternate bolus methods, not carb counting, until the end of the study. The results showed successful outcomes no matter what bolus strategy was used. The approach simply doesn't matter. Mealtime insulin works given in any manner, whether it's carb counting or not. The Secure T2D study showed that all methods resulted in improved A1C. All right, so myth number one, busted. Steve, what's myth number two? Pumps are too complex. As you can see here, the Secure T2D study cohort was representative of the US population with type two diabetes, proving that pump therapy is not too complex for this population. It's worth noting that 90% of the study participants said they would recommend Omnipod 5 to a family member or friend, and 91% said it was easy to use the smart bolus calculator. Myth number two, busted. Okay, Jeremy, it's your turn. What's myth number three? An AID system will not add benefit to a patient on a GLP-1. Now, we know that GLP-1s can be very effective for patients with type 2 diabetes, but often these patients still need insulin. The Secure T2D study shows patients saw improved results regardless of GLP-1 use, demonstrating that GLP-1s and the Omnipod 5 can be a great combination therapy. 
In practice, adding a GLP-1 to a patient already on the Omnipod 5 is safe and effective, especially with a system that gives insulin automatically and constantly adjusts the amount of insulin that you need depending on the given patient. Okay, another myth busted. <laughs> Steve, what's myth number four? It's difficult to prescribe. This one's easy. Omnipod 5 is covered by Medicare Part D without a C-peptide test. There's no four-year DME lock-in period, and you can get the pump at a regular pharmacy. Myth number four, busted. So finally, our last myth, give it to them, Steve. Fear, specifically fear of losing control of their blood sugars, fear of weight gain, and fear of hypoglycemia. The SECURE T2D study showed improved A1C and time and range without any increase in hypoglycemia, weight gain was minimal, and as we both address with our patients, some weight gain is a small price to pay for improved glycemic control that will ultimately, and most importantly, reduce diabetes-related complications, such as eye, kidney, nerve, and heart disease. So there we have it, Steve, all five myths Busted. So in closing, the results really do speak for themselves. The Omnipod 5 hybrid closed loop system with automated insulin delivery demonstrated improvements in A1C with no increase in hypoglycemia. It's easy to use, it's covered by Medicare, and it can be picked up at the pharmacy. We strongly recommend discussing the safe and effective option for your patients with type 2 diabetes to help them improve their glycemic control get them engaged with their condition, and ultimately lead to them living a longer, healthier life because of it. Thank you so much for watching.